All right, everybody, thank you again for joining us for another Wednesday night edition of Wave Runners. Yay! Nothing. I got Wave nothing. Runners. This rough crowd. You're wave and you run. Rough crowd today. All right, so first we're going to open up with a little song. Some of you may remember this song. I, for one, I have not sang this song a whole lot. What song is it going to be, Brian? I am in the Lord's Army. Well, yes, sir. Let's go ahead and sing that song. Are you ready? Yeah, I hope so. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I may never march in the infantry, Ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! Do I am a CH? I like that one. You ready? I am a C. I am a CH. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I am C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-A-R-T and I am L-I-B-E-T-R-N-L-L-Y. Do it fast? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm gonna try to do it fast, right? <clears throat> I am a C. I'm a C. I'm a C. I'm a C. And I'm C. I'm a 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 Sturgis. <laughs> Woo! Quite a drive today. Quite a yeah. drive. Fantastic. So, what do we do when we open up in prayer? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Lay them in your lap and take off your hat. <laughs> Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for uh, this avenue in which you've given us in this day and age, the technology that we can we can still give these kids lessons uh, it, through media, through technology. It's, it's been a blessing. Uh, thank you for Mr. Brian to come all the way here from Sturgis, Michigan, uh, to, to come here and, and teach the lesson for today. I pray you give him the words to teach, and I glorify you, and, that it, and through this t uh, day and age and the situation that's going on with the world, I pray for healing, I pray for peace, I pray for uh, joy in those that, that, that know you. And, Perhaps those who don't know you yet, they search you out and uh, you, you grab a hold of their hearts and you show them that even in, even in the darkness, that you are the light. For your glory alone, in Jesus' name alone. Amen. Amen. Take it away, Mr. Brian. All right. It's good to see everybody here today. It's been two weeks since I have taught you, believe it or not, and we talked about this particular person here and this young gentleman. Do you remember who that gentleman was? Oh, nobody remember it. I bet you you do. Some of you at home probably do remember it was Paul. He was put in, uh, in prison for speaking about the word of God and that his nephew here heard about 40 men that were going to capture him when the guards were going to bring him out of prison and they were going to kill him. But his nephew went and told him that he should escape. So Paul sent his nephew to talk to the man in charge, which was the captain of the guard. And we come to find out that the captain of the guard got 200 soldiers, 200 spearmen and 70 horsemen to transfer Paul to a different town. And that's how he became saved. And that's how he, he lasted. It was interesting that the, the captain of the guard did this on his own. No help from the Caesar at all or anything. And that was interesting to see that happening. 
But today, we're going to talk about these two people right here. And before we get to that person, those two people, we need to take a look at this right here. Acts 8, 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. This is very important because there's a key word in there. Probably most of you are thinking, oh, it's probably scattered. But no, it is preaching. Because that's what these two men were doing. They were preaching. And we need to find out who these people are. And right now, we know both of them are apostles. And Skyler thinks she knows who they are. Skyler. John and Peter. That's right, John and Peter. John and Peter were preaching in Jerusalem. It's interesting to see that. They were preaching to the people. They had a bunch of people that they were preaching to in Jerusalem. And guess, guess <laughs> what they were preaching. What was John preaching? The gospel. Right, the gospel. And what is the gospel that you think that they were preaching? They were preaching that Jesus was crucified and rose again. But something happened at this meeting. Some party crashers came in. A captain of the guard, some high priest, came in. Some Sadducees came in and they were very grieved. They did not like them talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he rose again in three days after he was buried and crucified. And so, you know what they did? They arrested John and Paul and they took them off to prison. And they put them in prison. They did that because it was too late in the night to try them for anything. And so they were going to try them the next day. So the next day came. And they called them out of prison. And they were there. The priests were there. And they had more guards too. And believe it or not, they asked them, by what authority do you have to talk like that? And believe it or not, before they were, we found out before that uh, they were put in prison when they were talking to the individuals that 5,000 men became saved that day before. But when they came and talked to them again, they asked them by what authority do you have to talk? 
And the main characters here are Annas, Calapas, John, and Alexandra, and a bunch of kindred that were uh, with the priest. And they ask him how, by what power, or by what name have you to do this? And Peter spoke up and said, because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, to you all and all people of Israel, by my name of, of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who you crucified, God raised from the dead, neither is there any salvation in any other uh, other name, name under heaven given among men, where you must be saved. That's by the authority that we have. We also find out, too, that later on, there was a certain individual there, which is going to become important later on. And we find out that the Sadducees and the priests and all these men, what are we going to do with these guys? What are we going to do? And they asked them to leave while they pondered that question. And so they did, and they said, well, why don't we just threaten them and tell them not to speak anymore? about the Lord Jesus Christ, about his resurrection. That's what we'll do. And so, believe it or not, that's what they did. They called the men back in. And started to talk to them. And he said... We know, for one, that you men are quite knowledgeable, but yet we think that you are ignorant and don't know what you are talking about. But they know that they weren't because they spoke with power of authority and they knew that they were with Jesus Christ at the time. And so they said, this is what we are going to do. We don't want you anymore to talk about this resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Peter and John said, together, we cannot do that. We cannot obey what man has to say, but we got to obey what God wants us to do. And they said, then again, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes again threatened them, but they could not do any harm to them because of this individual right here. This guy is important because when they entered Jerusalem in chapter 3, this guy was a lame man from birth. And when they came in, they healed him and he started to follow them through Jerusalem. So they know they couldn't charge him with anything because they did a miracle by healing this person that was lame from birth. And so they give another talk or two and they sent them out. And when they went back to the people that uh, they had there that were following them, They started to pray. And when they started to pray, they said, Lord Jesus, and dear God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to witness to these people. We know that you created heaven. We know you that you created the earth. We know that you created a thing, sea, and everything in it. We know that you created us. And we know that you sent your son, the Lord Jesus, to die for us upon the cross. And then at that time, suddenly, the whole building began to shake. It began to shake. And then suddenly, all the people there were filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of them were praising God, giving him the 
the recognition that he solely deserved that sending his son, his son the Lord Jesus to die for him upon the cross. And you know what these people did? Being filled with the Holy Ghost, they went out and sold some of their possessions, some of their land, some of their goods, and brought it back to Paul, uh, to Peter and John, to distribute among the needy that were, that were were in need. It was interesting to see that happening, that how the people were affected by the Holy Spirit and what they needed to do to help other people that were Christians in Jerusalem. And that's where our stories end right there, that these people were filled so much with the Holy Spirit and that they knew what to do with people that needed help. So remember that when you go out, remember when you become a Christian that you yourselves, each one of you, has the Holy Spirit in you and he has something for you to do. And this, that's why these people did what they were supposed to do. Even John and Peter preaching the word of God. And that's why he's got me here in this particular church at Fierce Lake Bible Church because uh, for me, my, I, my gift that he gave me is to be a servant in any way I can here. And that's what I'm doing. I like to talk to you kids, but I'm glad you could uh, be with me today and to learn about um, Peter and John and how they ministered in Jerusalem and that they were filled with the Holy Ghost just like you are when you become saved. So remember sometime, somewhere, maybe God will call upon you to be a witness for him. <laughs> Say yay! Hey, that's right. It is a lot different teaching to a camera, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. It's oh. and every single word, every single word you're saying is going to be it's out still there. Rolling. And, and it is still rolling. Yeah. Rolling. Yeah. Yeah. rolling. I'm not rolling. <laughs> rolling. It's still recording. Yes. Oh. So again, I'm not used to be in front of a camera that's a movement and yeah. you can talk. And it's a lot easier. And it's a lot easier for teachers to be able to work with an audience to get some feedback. But when it's this box, <laughs> it's a lot harder. And as a teacher, it's we want to see from you. We want to interact with you. We want to interact with you. But in this avenue, we can't. We can't look at you. We can't talk to you. We can't. You can't raise your hand and ask all the questions you want. If you do have questions about this lesson. Put them in the comments below. Call me. All sorts of stuff you can do to get a hold of me. Um, ask your parents to ask me. All that good stuff. But that's one thing that I miss from the Wave Runners when we're recording it. It's right. all your guys' questions. That's why we're here. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to witness about the word of truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, again, thank you, Mr. Brian. And now we're going to close in prayer. Ready? You, any of you want to close in prayer? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap. And take up your hand. I do always say that. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson we learned today. That we are called to witness about you. We are called to talk about you. I mean, in reality, what is there better to talk about? than the gospel, than that salvation that we know. And we put our faith and trust in you. There's nothing better to talk about. Especially in the time that we see now. When people are seeking hope. People are scared. People are secluded. You are the joy. You are the light in a dark and weary land. I pray that you not only embolden us adults, but embolden the kids talk more about Jesus, to talk more about the word of truth. As your word states, let no one discredit you for your youth. Our kids can talk about you. Adults can talk about you. People need to hear the truth. People need to hear about your love, your grace, your mercy, your wrath against sin. They need to know about you. They need to hear about you. May you give us the wisdom and the boldness to do so for your glory alone. In Jesus' name alone. Amen.
Bye, kids. Bye, kids. Bye, Thanks kids. for putting up with me. <laughs> All right, Wave Runner kids, we have got a treat for you. We are going to do a little something, something that uh, we used to play this game a lot. We're going to do it for you here, live, in action. We're going to play headbands. I think it's backwards, but whatever. All right, so I'm going to toss that one down. You know how this game is played. I'm going to stand behind the camera. The kids back here. Say hi, kids. Hi. They're going to look at my headband, and now you're with me. You get to guess, along with me, what they're doing. What are they trying to be like? And you guys can go ahead and guess along. I'm going to try guessing out loud because this stuff is not that easy. So, here we go. All right, headband. Headband is on. I'll just, I don't even need to wear a headband. I can just do this. Are you ready? Yeah. We got a monkey, a, do a, a dog, a lamb, a sheep. Yeah. A sheep? Did you guess? Did you? It is a sheep. Did you guess sheep? Some of these, they're not that really good at this game. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You ready? Next one. Go. Is it the same thing? No. What are you doing to them? Mil oh, you're, it's a cow. Yeah. It's a cow! Ah! We did it! Mer Cow! Alright, here we go. Ready? Uh... You are... Camden, you're not acting any differently than you normally do, so I have no idea what, what you're doing. <laughs> you're I, a chicken! I don't even know! A rooster? A, a duck? A goose? A stork? A... What in the world? A toucan? These things are a lot of birds, actually. You ready? Yep, yep. A dog. Yep. A dog. I got it from Camden. I got it from Camden's... <laughs> well, I don't know what else that could be. Here we go, a couple more. Uh, eagle. Yeah. Oh, I got that one in one try. Brian, <laughs> one try. Here we go. Um, wow. <laughs> Skylar, I don't know what that is. A chicken. A rooster. A pickle. A Reuben sandwich. A duck. Yeah! Really? Let's try to play A duck. Last one. Here we go. Another duck. Another bird. A rooster. A chicken, a penguin, a, a tiny beaked. You're chicken. You're a chicken. No, a hen. No. A hen. No. No. Brian, you got anything on this one? Probably a pigeon. Pigeon? No. Yeah. Is it? Oh, Brian's better at this game than I am. All right. Say goodbye, kids. Bye.